Hello and welcome to another episode of Project Supercar. I'm going to continue with this series of videos about the Stoney Kit Car Show. Now, this is going to be a sad episode because although I enjoyed the show very much, I think everybody who attended um, came to the same conclusion that the show was much smaller than last year. Now this is no fault of the organisers or anything like that and there are reasons why the show was much smaller than last year and I'm going to try and explain why in this video. So if we take a look at the show um, it was really quiet. Where all these quantums are now, last year that was full of trade stands, but um, they seem to be gone. Yeah, again, take a look around here. There's a few cars, um, but there's no people, um, there's no crowds, there's no queues, you know, trying to serve drinks or food. Um, I mean, the Westfield um, skid pan, that always draws in the crowd, but not this year, it was just quiet. Now one of the reasons for the poor attendance was the um, bad economic situation. Um, basically people just can't afford to go anymore. You see the average person in the UK pays around 80% tax a year. Now that might sound over the top but I'm going to show you how. Let's just take a look at the average salary in the UK. Uh, Google says it's around 29,000, in reality it's closer to about 27,000, but we'll go with 27,000 just to make the, the maths a little bit easier. So when you get paid in the UK, um, we have what is called a national insurance. So before you get paid, about 13% is taken from your salary and um, your employer does this. So 13% is taken from you, then you receive your salary and then a further 11% or so is taken again. Then you're hit with another uh, an income tax which is either at 20% or 40%. So with this national insurance and uh, income tax hit, you've almost lost half your wages. Now some of you might say, oh, it's your work, your uh, employer that pays the 13% national insurance. No, that's not how it works. Um, this is what the government says, it's a bit of a scam really. Your employer has already worked out how much they can um, afford to pay you. They've already worked out your salary, say it's like 32000 Well before they can give you the 32000 the government turns up and says you've got to pay us 13%. So then that 32,000 is dropped down to 27,000 and change, roughly. That's your salary. Then the government hits you again with about 11% or so, depending on your circumstances, and that's dropped even further. So it's a bit of a scam to say your employer pays 13%. No, that's coming out of your salary before you even get your salary. But okay, you might be saying, well, that's not 80%. All right. So you've got your salary, and um, in this country we have something called the council tax. Uh, let's have a look at what the average council tax is in this country. So the average bill for the council tax in this country is around £1,671. That's a month's salary if you haven't figured that out. So you've, you're down half your salary already with your two lots of national insurance and your income tax. Oh, and by the way, if you still don't believe me about the two lots of uh, national insurance, if you are self-employed, then guess what? You have to pay both. So yes, we all pay two lots of national insurance. So anyway, you pay two lots of national insurance, which is 11%, 13%. Then you're paying another 20%. Unless you earn over £36,000 a year, which means you're going to be paying a 40% income tax, and then you're hit with another month's salary with your council tax. Okay, still not 80% you reckon, well let's continue. 
So let's say you're down to about five months left of your salary so far. Well, we also have what is called VAT, which is 20%. So let's say you buy something, um, say an alternator. Well, that's plus 20%. Say the alternator is £100. Let's see if I can find one online. So let's say you buy this alternator and it's £99.99, £100 plus the VAT, so it's going to cost you 120 quid. Well, the thing is, is the company selling you this alternator is already paying tax at somewhere around 26-27%. So they have to put that cost onto the price. So that £99, £100, there's 30% tax on that already. And then the factory that made it, they've got to pay tax as well. So that tax is also added into the cost of the alternator. So by the time you've actually bought your alternator, you've paid about 50% tax on that thing. So it's costing you 120 quid, it should cost you about 60. Now not all shops and retailers actually show the VAT, a lot of it's hidden. But just say you close, uh, car parts, all this sort of stuff, um, there's at least 50% VAT in there and, and tax. But then consider your shopping, your weekly shopping, your monthly shopping. Let's say you spend, I don't know, say £400 a month shopping. Probably a bit more than that, to be honest with you. But just to make the math simple. Well, if you buy a tin of beans, guess what? That company that made the tin of beans has to pay tax. That tax goes on to the price of the tin of beans. Then Tesco's or Sainsbury's or wherever you shop at, they are charged tax as well, which goes on to the price of the tin of beans again. And this is usually somewhere around 27-30%, something like that. So your tin of beans is costing you twice as much as it should. It's about 50% tax. So that roughly means that your uh, shopping each month is 200 quid worth of tax, 50% tax. So we're getting close to the 80%. I, mean, I don't know how many months left of our salary we've got. I think we're down to, what, three months, basically, left of your salary, maybe two months. But in the UK, what happens if you, um, I don't know, run a car and you've got to put petrol in there, diesel, whatever? Well, let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at the fuel price breakdown for the UK. So, from September 2018, petrol was roughly 130.76p uh, a litre, and diesel 133.42. Now, if you look at the breakdown, there's the VAT, which is 16.67%. You've got fuel duty, which is 44.32%. Um, the actual cost of the fuel is 39%. So, way over half of your fuel costs is going into tax. I mean, I could play this game all day. Uh, it doesn't stop there. You can look at your uh, insurance for your car. You've got to pay tax on that. I think it's 12%. Heating costs, um, there's a carbon tax on your electricity, your gas and all this sort of stuff. When you sit down and try and work it all out, that you, you will realise that the average person in the UK is spending somewhere around 80% of their annual salary on tax. So you're struggling to survive on what, two months, six weeks worth of your salary? No wonder no one can afford to go to these shows anymore. But it doesn't stop there, because the money you earn um, isn't even money. Um, you may or may not have heard of this uh, term before. It is called fiat currency. Fiat is Latin. It means by decree. So the government is enforcing these um, fiat notes onto us, and they're actually notes of debt. This is where the national debt comes from. Let's take a look.
And there it is. Over two trillion pounds and going up. That's the money supply because the, the money supply is notes of debt. Um, now what's happening every year with these notes that you earn is it's being eroded away. Your purchasing power is being eroded. The government does this by printing more of these notes every year and then putting it into circulation. So this has the effect of stealing your purchasing power and reducing how much your note is worth. This has an effect of putting the prices up. So when you go to these um, shows, not just the kit car show, any show, you'll find that you know a cup of coffee is three pounds now, or a bacon and egg cob is five pound fifty, or fish and chips is nine quid. It's not them putting the prices up. What's happening is your notes are being devalued. Now, if you're not sure how this works, consider a small town and there's a hundred thousand pounds in circulation in this town. Well if the government goes and prints another hundred thousand pounds worth of notes and then puts it into that economy there's now two hundred thousand pounds worth of notes which means means each, each note has been devalued by fifty percent so your one pound or one dollar well that's now worth fifty p or fifty cents so this explains why the average person can't afford to go to these shows anymore because they're just basically taxed to death. Oh, and by the way, the uh, kickoff show itself hasn't put the price of the tickets up each year, even though inflation has been going up by about six or eight percent. So kudos to the organisers of the kickoff show. But let's talk about the HS2 railway that's cutting through Stonely, shall we? Now, because I've been going to the Stonely kit car show for many, many years, um, I've actually gained quite a collection of all the brochures you get when you uh, walk through the gates. So we can take a look at the site map for this year, 2019, and compare it with last year, 2018, and we can see a difference. Now, as you can see, there's a great big slice chopped off the side of the Stonely Park, the actual site itself. Um, public car park number two is completely gone, and um, it looks like the site or pitch 29, which was where the Lamborghinis used to, used to be, um, well, that's gone. So I did a bit of research, and it looks like this is permanent. HS2 is a great big railway project that no one in the UK really wants but the government is forcing onto us anyway. Let's take a look at how much it's going to cost. Well, it says the initial cost is going to be 55.7 billion. However, I have seen um, estimates as high as 100 and 18 billion pounds. Now, do you remember that national debt clip I showed you earlier? Yeah, right. Not very smart of the government to spend that amount of money when this country is in so much debt. So what does this mean for the Stonely kit car show or the site itself? Obviously the site hosts many other um, events and has a lot of um, work to do with horses. It looks like some of it's going to be moved around. Um, here's a sort of map that I've managed to find. Gives you an idea of what they're planning on doing. Um, but whatever they end up doing, we've lost that part of the site. So how this affects the show in the future, I'm not too sure. However, it is a bit worrying.
So sorry for the uh, sad episode, um, not good news and um, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I really do hope that Stonely can turn itself around because I've been going to these shows for years and it's going to be a sad day when the Stonely Kit Car Show comes to an end and I really don't want that to happen. Anyway, once again, sorry for the sad episode and I'll catch you the next one and hopefully it will be a lot more upbeat. Bye for now.